Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about fetal heart rate decelerations. Um, this video is meant to just be kind of a review of what we've discussed in class. Um, it's going to walk you through each of the three different kinds of heart rate decelerations, what causes those decelerations, and then from what there, once we know the cause, finding the remedy is fairly easy. So the first one that we're going to talk about are variable decelerations, or what we call variables. These decelerations are caused by cord compression. So anything that's gonna compress the umbilical cord. So this is my poor man's um, umbilical cord here. It's just some rubber bands tied together. Um, in real life, the umbilical cord is actually pretty squishy. It's got two arteries and one large vein. We remember that by big V little a. Um, and it's got jelly that kind of wraps those veins and arteries in um, a cushion. So when any time that the umbilical cord is compressed, you can see a variable deceleration. So there can be many, many things that cause this. Um, it can just be positional. So um, I've got a baby here that I'm going to kind of use for demonstration. So if baby's laying here in the uterus, um, you know, sometimes the cord attaches at the umbilicus and is attached to the placenta, but it's kind of floating around in there. So sometimes baby just ends up laying on it. Um, if that's the case, that's a pretty easy fix. Sometimes we've seen on ultrasounds and stuff, babies will actually be holding the cord in their hand and squeezing the cord to compress the cord. Um, oftentimes too in labor, we will get what we call a nuchal cord, which is where the cord is wrapped around the baby's neck. So babies got the cord attached to the umbilicus and then it wraps around the neck. Sometimes it wraps around the neck twice. So every time there's a contraction, um, that cord is stretched really, really thin. You can kind of see it stretching there. So that cord is stretched thin as the baby is pushed down into the birth canal. Um, that stretching closes off the diameter. It makes the diameter of the um, arteries and the veins smaller. And so that causes cord compression as well. So any of those scenarios can cause cord compression. So when you're looking at a variable deceleration on the monitor, it's going to be um, pretty quick. It's gonna kind of be abrupt and a very quick recovery. It's gonna look something like that. Um, the decelerations can occur with contractions or without the contractions. It doesn't really matter. Um, however, if it's happening with every contraction, that can be suggestive of a nuchal cord, um, which unfortunately we can't really do much about until baby is delivered. So what are we gonna do when mom or baby is having decelerations? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is position change. Left is best, so we're gonna turn mom to her left side if she's not already on her left side. Um, that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing we're gonna do is we can give her an IV fluid bolus. And th that is really more if these um, variable decelerations are persistent and uh, the heart rate's dropping pretty low, you know, into the 60s or 70s. We wanna give mom um, some extra fluids because in turn then we're giving baby some extra fluids. Remember in utero, the placenta takes over the function of oxygenation for the fetus. The fetus is actually breathing in amniotic fluids, so there's no ex air exchange taking place in the lungs. The air exchange all takes place in the placenta. So what we do affects mom. So if we give mom more fluids to increase her blood volume, we're gonna end up giving baby more blood volume too. And then if needed, the third thing we can do for this is oxygen. When we give moms oxygen in labor, we are giving them 10 to 12 liters on a non-rebreather. We do not mess around with um, nasal cannula at this point. So oxygen via non-rebreather can also be another option, especially if they're happening with every contraction because baby has a nuchal cord. The biggest thing to remember though is position. The next deceleration we're gonna talk about are earlies. I'm gonna put baby back over here. Um, early decelerations are due to fetal head compression. These decelerations really are nothing to worry about. Um, I always think of it as like a baby vagal response. So as the fetus is pushed further into the birth canal, as that head gets pushed down here, the head is going to be compressed. When that head is compressed, that causes a reaction in the fetus that causes the heart rate to slow down. So as the contraction is causing the heart, the deceleration, the contraction is going to mimic the deceleration. And what I mean by that is you're gonna have a deceleration that looks like this and a contraction 
that matches it. So it's gonna start with the contraction and end with the contraction. Um, again, it's that head compression as the contraction pushes the fetus down onto the cervix and into the birth canal, that is going to cause the head to compress and that's gonna cause a slowing of the fetal heart rate. Again, these are okay. We do not worry about these. There are no interventions. There is nothing that you need to do for these. These are a good sign of labor progression. And again, um, it's due to head compression. So baby's gotta get that head through the birth canal. Even if we wanted to fix them, we really can't until baby's delivered. So early decelerations, these are good. These are from head compression. I'm just quickly going to put this part in here um, on accelerations. So accelerations are increases in the fetal heart rate. Um, and the reason I'm throwing these in here is because there's a fun little mnemonic that I'll give you at the end to help you remember all of this. Um, and this is part of that mnemonic. So accelerations are increases in the fetal heart rate. So you can see right here you have an increase and right here you have an increase in the fetal heart rate. These are reassuring and absolutely no interventions are required. When we see these, this means that we have a happy, healthy baby in utero. So these are good, we like those. You do not need to do any. The last deceleration we are gonna talk about are late decelerations. We'll put baby back in here. <laughs> late decelerations are so named because they occur late in the contraction. So what I'm talking about is you're gonna have a contraction on the monitor here and you're gonna have a deceleration that kind of starts after the peak of the contraction and resolves after the contraction has resolved. So you can see here, the deceleration starts right as that contraction is peaking and resolves well after that contraction is done. So as we mentioned earlier, the placenta functions as the fetal lungs essentially while the baby's in utero. This is where all of the oxygenation is taking place and the oxygen exchange. There's a bunch of little spiral blood vessels here, arteries and uh, veins, and those are what where the oxygen exchange occurs between mom's bloodstream and baby's bloodstream. So when we are having late decelerations, it's a placental problem, okay? So if you think about it, if you have to take your breath, take a big deep breath and hold it for a minute, you usually have enough oxygen on board to get you through however long you need to hold your breath. If you're you know, rinsing your face off for something or diving underwater real quick, you can take a big enough breath and have enough oxygen in your bloodstream that you're not affected by taking that big deep breath. That's what should happen when there are contractions. So when there's contractions, all these little blood vessels here are pinched off. When all those blood vessels are clamped down and pinched off, there's no oxygen exchange taking place. Normally, with a happy, healthy placenta, this is not a problem. However, if you are having placental problems, um, i.e. an old placenta typically is the case, or there are too many contractions in a row and not enough of a rest period here in between for that placenta to um, refill and reoxygenate, you're gonna start seeing late deceleration. So this is kind of a cry for help from the baby saying, I don't have enough oxygen here, I need help. So late decelerations are not good. So what things cause an old placenta? Well, there's several. One, smoking. Smoking ages the placenta very rapidly. Um, gestational diabetes can cause an old placenta. Um, advanced maternal age. Anything that's going to make the placenta work harder than normal can cause the placenta to age faster. And again, we talked about if mom's being induced and we're giving her Pitocin and we're making these contractions come too fast um, where she's got one right after another, right after another, and there's no rest time here, this rest time is very important. If that rest time isn't there, that oxygen, that placenta is not gonna have enough time to reoxygenate and baby is not gonna have enough reserves left. So the very first thing we're going to do if we're having late decelerations is we're gonna stop our Pitocin if we have it going, and we're gonna apply oxygen. And again, when we're applying oxygen, we're doing 10 to 12 units via a non-rebreather. Um, these two I typically kind of do simultaneously. I will stop my Pitocin while I'm reaching for my oxygen with my other hand. Um, so those are your two big ones here. The third one is IV fluid bolus. And then the last intervention is a position change. 
And again, we're gonna put mom onto her left side if possible because the left side is going to be the best for perfusing the placenta. So the whole point in fixing these, these are caused by lack of placental perfusion. We need to increase perfusion to the placenta. So we're gonna stop our Pitocin, get these rest breaks longer. We want those lengthened out. We're gonna give mom oxygen. If we give mom oxygen, remember then we're giving baby oxygen. We're gonna increase our IV fluids. We're gonna give her a big bolus of fluids that's gonna increase her blood volume, thus bringing more oxygen supply to the placenta. And then we're gonna put mom on her left side because that's the optimal position for placental perfusion. So that's gonna promote the, or have the least resistance to placenta getting to, or oxygen getting to the placenta to oxygenate baby. The lates are trouble. Lates and earlies can look pretty close to each other because they're both kind of a gradual onset. They're not super quick like our variables were. So it's the timing that you really have to look, up, look at in relation to the contraction. The earlies are gonna mirror the contraction, the lates are gonna start late in the contraction. So a little saying I always like to remember is, it's always okay to be early to dinner, but it's never okay to be late. So the mnemonic that we're using for this is called veal chop. And the veal chop will make sense here in just a second. Um, it's a quick and easy way to remember your um, decelerations or changes in fetal heart rate and what causes them. So when we look at V, we're talking about our variables. And remember, those are called caused by cord compression. When we are talking about our E, that's our earlies, and those are caused by head compression. The A stands for accelerations, and those are okay. And then our L stands for late, and those are problems with the placenta. So if you can remember this mnemonic, this is gonna help you remember what causes the change in the heart rate and what you need to do to fix it. So variables are caused by cord compression. The biggest thing for that is position change. Earlies are caused by head compression. Those are okay, we don't worry about those. You can't really do much about that. Accelerations, those are okay. In fact, those are great. We love to see accelerations. And then lates are problems with the placenta. So we need to increase our placental perfusion. You're gonna do that by increasing the fill time in between contractions by stopping your Pitocin, increase the oxygen supply going to baby by giving mom some oxygen, increase mom's blood volume by giving her an IV fluid bolus, and positioning mom on her left side to improve placental perfusion. Those are the different decelerations and changes in fetal heart rate that you can see on a monitor. I hope this mnemonic helps you remember this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time on The Nerdy Nurse. Talk to you later.